Hi guys, another episode of Plane Talk. So I got to thinking, what is a plane? Well, a plane is nothing more than a method of holding an edge at a fixed angle to the wood to smooth it. Now, if you want, you can take a chisel and you can smooth wood all day long. Look at that curl. But, put it in a fixed body and now it's that much easier. So, let's take this apart so that you can see the different components that make up a Bailey Patent style plane and uh, what each part does. You'll need a screwdriver and a plane. The first part is the lever cap. The lever cap is what keeps everything together. You just pull up on the lever like such, lift it up, slide it off and you're done. You want to check it, make sure that there's no broken edges down here and that the spring is good. There's not a lot you can do to this except clean it up a little bit and a drop of oil in the knuckle. But other than that, the lever cap does exactly what it's supposed to do. It just sits there. Now you've got the blade assembly. Some people call these double irons or cut irons with a chip breaker. The chip breaker is also known as a cap iron in some places. But basically its function is the same no matter what you call it. It's there to break the chips as they come up over the edge. Now you can see how close I have that set. It's uh, oh, a sixteenth or less. I don't measure it. I look at it by eye. I, I kind of judge where it goes. Take a few test cuts. If I get a shaving that is straight, where it shoots up out of the plane, then it's in my opinion, perfectly set. This one, as you can see, is in need of a little cleaning. I put a little oil on it to uh, get it to move on the frog a little easier. But the cap iron and the chip breaker are held together with the chip breaker screw. You should use the biggest screwdriver you have and place it in there firmly and just give it an unlock and you're good to go. If you were sharpening. All you do is slide it back and give it a little tighten. That's it. You do not have to take it off to sharpen. You would go to your honing stone, find your bevel, hone, flip it over, clear the burr, and then put it back. Not a big deal, but it <laughs> If I had known that a long, long time ago, it probably would have saved me a day of my life. So to take it off, you can devise your own left or right method. If you go to the left, it actually tightens. If you go to the right, it loosens. Or is it the other way around? Yeah. This way it tightens. And to the left, it loosens. Slip it up over the hole, pop it off, you're good to go. The chip breaker is only as good as its mating surface. Now you'll see a lot of guys, they'll give you nice close-ups and everything. I can't do that. This is raw footage. But you have a flat back, whether you use the, the bevel on the back, ruler trick or a true flat, and the cap iron. And they have to mate to where there is zero light coming through between the blade face and the chip breaker. You can file that. This is not hardened as hard as, a, as an iron. You can file that a little bit. You can take it to a stone. Just make sure that when you do it, you're, you're down a little, so you're creating a little bit of a bevel there. Get it to almost a point, and then come back and put a little bit of a flat on there. That'll act as the breaker. So that's it. You take the two apart, you sharpen your iron, your blade, however you want, 
and you're good to go. As far as cleaning these, I'm going to take them in the house and I'm going to soak this all in toilet bowl cleaner. <laughs> I know, it sounds funny, but toilet bowl cleaner has hydrochloric acid in it and it's relatively cheap. It's available. It's in your household already. So I'll wrap these in, a, in paper towel with toilet bowl cleaner on it. Leave it sit for 15 minutes or so, go back, scrub it with a nylon brush, wash it off, neutralize it, dry it, and that'll get rid of a lot of the rust. Step two, you can take your knob and handle off. Now, this is a World War II era plane, so it has less elaborate fittings. They're all steel, chrome plated, and the knobs, you may find them where they're rosewood. I'm not sure about this one. I don't think this is. I think this is maple or beech that has been stained like a cordovan or a rosewood. You take the tote off. Now the tote has two screws on a four and a half. Because it's bigger, they use the handle design for the number five and larger. So you've got the toe screw and the handle screw. Once again, these screws are just steel. There's no brass fittings because brass was in shortage. I would take the screws out and they will get soaked in soapy water. The only thing left on this one is the frog. You have two screws. Take them out. And this particular plane has a simple frog. What I mean by a simple frog is it does not have the pin down here and the additional screw for advancing the frog forward and back. I guess that was another conservation wartime effort. In my opinion, to me, it doesn't really matter. You can then take your knob off to make sure that the threads are all clean and this so let's talk about that. This is the knob. This happens to be Bakelite. Regularly there would be brass. This is your yoke. The yoke is the part that attaches to the knob and then up into the, into the slot for advancing the iron on the plane. So you, so that is how that works. This is your lateral adjuster. All you want to do is make sure that it's straight and that it moves freely. There's nothing you really have to worry about that. This screw here, you can take that out. Clean that up, polish that up. And there you go. The frog is pretty much disassembled. You can take this screw out, but 99 times out of 100, I would not. Two important parts of the plane are the, the faces where the frog meets the body. So here you have a machine surface, here you have a machine surface, and they mate up here. These need to be clean, rust-free, and lightly lubricated. Sometimes you may get some leftover japanning or paint on there. So you just want to make sure that it's clean and that you're getting a good mating surface up there and there. And that's about it, boys and girls. Now they go in for a soak. I will take laundry compound, just powdered soap, mix it with warm water, and I will put all my metal parts in there except for the blade. The blade will be done separately. 
and I will let them soak for 15 minutes to a half hour in warm soapy water. And then I'll come back in with a soft brush and clean out things which this looks like sawdust or glue or something that may have dropped on here. There's a little bit here. And I will clean it all off, dry it off, and then bring it back in the shop where we will then oil it up. So that's about it for now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and proceed with the cleaning. And then when I'm all done, we'll have another video talking about how to put it back together and uh, why it works as good as it does. The design is impeccable, absolutely impeccable. It just never ceases to amaze me that this design is from the 1800s. Leonard Bailey came up with the design. Stanley got it from Leonard and then they made some minor improvements over time, but for a hundred years, there's been no better plane design. Yeah, there's been some other tweaks and whatever, but there's no tiny screws to lose. The smallest one is this one here, which is about a three quarter inch, quarter, I'm not sure if it's quarter 20 or not, but it looks like about a quarter inch screw. That's it. So talk to you later. Walter out.